A herbs with set, you diff are what? What's good, y'all? Mikey. And what's going on, Boogie Man? And then we back with another episode of Smoke Bang, where we smoke, talk shit, and we eat good, y'all. First things first, though, before we get into that, we want to take a time out to appreciate y'all for rocking with us so far. Or, you know, everyone who's liked, commented, subscribed, and shared. You know, we appreciate that, helping us on this journey to build this momentum. Or, you know, we got plenty more good things coming for y'all. I know we've been on a sort of a uh, little bit of a film review type of wave, it feels like, but that's what we do, that's what we yeah, work for with, sure. you know what I'm saying? Um, so today, in a vein with what we're doing in the mukbang, I know you see it in the title, the Ethiopian food, um, sort of want to put in line with some of the best uh, sort of films that have taken place in Africa, sort of in recent World history. Africa, yeah, yeah. Sure. you know what I'm saying? Um, so, and that, I think that I felt like my list is a little fucking commercial, right, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Blood Diamond is on, definitely starts off the list, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know that story. Uh, pretty, that shit was good. That was a good yeah, film, you know what I'm saying? Leo, Leo. Jamin, 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 Hansu, Hansu, Leo, um, Jennifer Connelly did a thing in that too. Word. So, um, and Leo got nominated for, for some gold for that one. Or, you know, it's definitely a good movie, and obviously you know, you're not of direct African, African descent, but or it's taking place in Africa. Of That's research, it was um, pretty accurate to show the horrors of what goes on, on for these trades. The blood mean, diamond trade, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, then, in that same vein, Hotel Rwanda, um, also on the list, you know what I'm saying? Paul, played by Don Cheadle, you know, takes these uh, refuge, refugees into his hotel um, during the height of the Hutu and the Tutsis type uh, conflict in Rwanda um, and all that shit that he went through, and that's a true story. Um, then, uh, what did I see? The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, the Green Joint. Um, so that's right, it's another true story, Fire, William. Uh, in Malawi, during the 2002 famine, um, he developed like a windmill just by reading a book, in, uh, yeah, a book on energy um, in his class that he had to drop out of school because he couldn't go, uh, afford it. You know what I'm saying? But um, developed windmills um, so that they could plant like, year round. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, those were the joints that that was on my list. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, um, like those were, um, and I seen, I was able to see, I think just one of those so far was obviously Blood Diamond. I haven't really seen the other two. I've heard about Hotel Rwanda over the years, and I didn't get a chance to get to Boy Who Wanted to Win just yet, but I'm definitely going to give it a check. But I started my list actually with a documentary. It was on Disney Plus is where I found it. It was on the list that you sent me. It was called Into the Akavango, and it was a nature documentary, but not in the vein that we normally see him, which is fully, um, solely focused on the animals and things like that. Mm -hmm. There was a researcher, a um, British man, who found this pocket. Now, the Akavango is like, almost like a sanctuary. Like, it's in Africa, in between Botswana, Namibia, and Angola. And the majority of it has been untouched by man for a long, long, long time. So, you know, just simple science and nature thing. He's going out there on the exploration. He's trying to find some elephants and like just get a, a a beat on what type of wildlife is out there. While he's out there, he finds like so much of it has been destroyed by mines because there used to be warfare out there. And then he even gets lost at a certain point when he finds there's no water and they have like canoes and rafts they have to drag for miles over dry land. But then like there's a whole bunch of unrest and just a uh, beautiful like journey of you know scientific wonder and he finds these things and he found new wildlife new species in the journey and found these elephants and it was really really beautiful stuff. New species? Yeah he found new species of birds. Oh, like right. classified new species of birds out there on his journeys. I can't remember the exact number I don't want to misquote myself so check it out it's on Disney Plus that's for the nature lovers. You know, like that. Um, the next one was the next two, I'm not going to give too much information about them because these are films that you have to see yourself and let the plot just unravel itself. One was called The First Grader. Um, 
also kind of in the vein of in the boy who parties to win with the education. Um, he was an 84 year old man in the first grade because of like war and poverty, he was not allowed to go to or afford school for the majority of his life. So he goes as an 84 year old man. So you could only imagine the culture shock for himself and the kids in that situation. Beautiful film. And the next one was called The Burial of Kojo. This one's on Netflix. It's rated 100% on Rotten Tomatoes and it's by far one of the most beautiful and ambitious films I've seen. Like it tackles the themes of brotherhood, spirituality, and a daughter's love for her father and his for her. It's like, y'all definitely have to go check that one out if you get the chance, man. Like, yeah, that's gonna be right up your alley. Like the way it's shot, cinematography, crazy. Um, and together, we both watched um, The Last King of Scott. You might have to get me my, um, my kente with you real quick because um, I'm about to probably go there. Like, man. Now, I think one of the reasons why, now I like the film, let me start off by that. I like the film, I think um, Forrest Whitaker's Oscar was well deserved because of what he did. He did his job very well with the portrayal of Idi Amin. Um, so, I think it didn't connect for the reasons that, you know, we seeing a film that came out in 2006 in 2021 and you know some of the themes and the elements of it for me personally were a little bit like outdated into like you know what my present eye is looking for but that's not the movie's fault what is the movie's fault to me is just certain portrayals um that bothered me like obviously this is a man that his violence and his ruthless nature was well documented like so there's not going to be um, uh, exaggeration on that part. But some of the minute um, things, like with Carrie Washington's character and the choices she made, like I don't know how true the story was to that effect, mm -hmm. but you're gonna tell me a woman who knows and has a passenger front seat view to the violence that her husband does is just gonna willingly just throw herself to the wilds of this white man. Like, just yeah. like that, just for whatever, like. Well, I, ain't I, <laughs> I ain't bite, I ain't bite. That's always going to be the dramatization of any types of those stories, bro. Mm -hmm. Especially something that's an Oscar contention and all exactly. that type of shit. There's that Hollywood aspect to it. Who, um, then who wrote it? You know what I'm saying? Who wrote it? Who so, directed it? And it's like you do know how it goes. In most cases, that a prominent black actor is going to get an Oscar for a leading role. Mm -hmm. When you dissect those roles they're probably not the most positive portrayed. It's like, you take it back to Hattie McDaniel, she won for playing, like, you know, a manly character in the slave. Holly in Monsters Ball, she had to get got done Denzel. dirty. Denzel had to be a wicked cop, you know, and Forrest Whitaker had to be, like, this evil dictator, you know. Malcolm yeah. couldn't win, that's all. you know. Yeah, of course. That's the history of it. So that's just how it is. Um, but, <clears throat> Yeah, I always leave in the, the wiggle room for that type of shit and not to be uh, sort of expectant in those types of Hollywood films for like that not to be that the, there's some level of fuckery in the portrayal of, you know what I'm saying? The story it is going to just be what the fuck it is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to that. Yeah. Those types of films. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, it didn't feel like like his story was so like captivating. Right, you know because there was no, what makes a good villain in any type of story you're telling is depth and empathy. I tell people this all the time, like it's the reasons why people like Thanos and people like Magneto like are great villains. Why people mm -hmm. have the Joker, why people like them as villains because when you dissect them, and you listen to them, you might find yourself being like, damn, son kind of got a point, bro. <laughs> like, uh, there was none of that, I feel, to the portrayal of um, Idi Amin in um, Last King of Scotland. He yeah. was just um, paranoid, um, and ego, like, very high ego. Because they didn't really tap that far into his past, like, right. really set up. Exactly. Anything for you to be empathetic about. You no. Know? You know what I'm saying? If you're coming from the angle of him being empath not having an empathetic side. You right. know what I'm saying? If anything, they painted more of a story for the doctor's character, James McAvoy's right. character. Exactly. Um, and what he was going through and how cap yeah, he was held right. captive and having to put all the 
under all these pressures and being sort of duped into not exactly. knowing what was going on and all that. And of course, the nigga gets, he does all that and he gets away scot free. Of course. It actually brought me back, you know, thinking of stories like that because, like, it was Idiot Me's story. It was Forrest Whitaker's role. But the time that when you're telling a black story, the need to couple it with a white story as it's foiled. And that very much made me think of American Gangster. Like, you know, you had the story of Frank Lucas, who by himself, you know, what he represented at the time, so, by himself and his story itself is absolutely like enough for him yeah. to have his own story, his own focus, as everybody else gets this. Scarface got his. Um, public enemies of John Dillinger and Jesse James and all these other like prominent like bandits, you feel me, or crime figures, Al Capone, they got theirs, you know? Like there'll be one offshoot. Even but um if you think about Oh, what is it? Public enemies? No, not public enemies. Um Untouchables, the um, the one that Al Capone movie. It wasn't necessarily an Al Capone movie. It was a Elliot Ness story, so it'll be always intended to be that. But in certain situations, it's like you have to couple, you know, mm -hmm. the black story with the white story right. because I did enjoy, like, you know, Richie's side of it as a detective. Mm -hmm. You know, I did very much enjoy it, but I could have very much enjoyed the film without it. Right. The same way, to be honest, bro. Same way. Well, I guess people have intended the cat and mouse of it. You Indeed. Know what I'm Indeed. So you need that. Uh, uh, well, at least in a story like that. Yeah, you know saying like a, a crime story. I mean, I could definitely can tell that, but oh, yeah. But um, about that time. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Definitely. So we'll be back. Set up this battle for you. Holla, oh. Jen. Second, I'm gonna do it. Back with the Ethiopian food today, like you said. Oh, um, good food. Or Boogie put me on. This is my first time having this, as a matter of fact. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They out here in Harlem, um, over on 148, 149th and 8th Avenue. Check them out. Um, named Ben Young is the name of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So I got me something what's called the end. Pardon me if I butcher the pronunciation. It's the angle diet. And that's some of the mushrooms right here. Emphasize it came with green lentils and red lentils and it come in um, the injera wrap. And that's some um, alkaline flour made um, made out of teff. The alkaline flour, what you rocking with? So I got the split pea stew, the kind of the gomer. Gomer? The gonen or something like that. Hold on. No, I ain't got the specification for you. Oh yeah, so gomen I think it's, um, like a collard green type, collard blue type thing. Mm -hmm. The domo wat is the chicken, stew chicken, and the stew lamb, and the stew beef. Wow. Let's get to it. I'm gonna try one of these. These, so let me put this up. I think that was a, that was a beef. Mm -hmm. I think I'm mad right. flavorful. You might go with the extra in Jedi because this shit is like, it's a lot of sauce and bad flavors. So it's like, you would just soak it all up. Like um, this reddish thing is that everything that okay. 
That's one of their staple sources, man. I think it's coated in this chicken right here. Mm -hmm. More than likely. I get my hands on some of that. Spicy, got a little spice to it. I'm trying to feel there's anything that I ever had. It's like the texture of this, the injera is like bouncy, sort of like a, like like a spongy, spongy like real pancake type thing. Almost like a, no, not crepe, because the crepe is kind of solid. Like, mm -hmm. But like very thin, like a thin, thin, soft, like pancake type situation. Can we get everything by hand? Not everything, but I would like to try to eat as much by hand as I could. Am I supposed to eat just greens and all that by hand? Oh, you might write down this situation. <laughs> like, man, like, yeah, everything I'm eating by hand, for sure. You know? That's the way of the ancestors, you feel me? Like, eating by hand and being full like this, especially with my side of the plate, you know, that's all, like, that grows from the earth and eating it with your hand without a divider vision of like a metal fork especially or something like that. It's just really putting you more in tune and in touch. And you know, it's eating it on a more simplified level. Right? If you ever notice when babies eat, right? When babies eat or they eat with their hands mm -hmm. and the food is all over their face and all that, they ain't be in perfect harmony. Just be perfectly fine eating that. Oh, yeah, sure. And even think about Americans. Most of the food you can tend that most of the people eat the most of and get the most joy from eating. It's finger food. It's handheld mm -hmm. finger food. That's a good thing. Split pan. Looks like curry. Mm -hmm. You had it there? Yeah, I've had it before. You don't have it right no, now? I don't have it on. What's that? I got green lentils on this oh, side. Oh, green lentils. And the red lentils. What's winning for you so far? Um, probably the beef that um am so far. I have mushrooms. Mushrooms is busting like... Now, I hear this from everybody on my journey that I, I tell about, you know, being a herbivore and all that about mushrooms. Like, woo. Everybody swear they don't like mushrooms. My whole life I ain't like mushrooms. Couldn't stand mushrooms. I would probably try to fight you if you put a mushroom on my face. The problem is, most niggas don't know how to cook mushrooms. That's the problem. People don't know what they're doing. That's pretty simple. And it's, yeah, it's super simple. Like, it's super simple. Mushrooms do whatever you want them to do. Put them on the But these aren't really green on flavors. These mushrooms are good money. Plant sauce is good. It got a good spice to it. Like, no. Spice is like, y'all. Uh, Too late. Not that I got you to eat much of it. Right? 
be full like this, like close to the alkaline food. Like, that shit feels so much better than eating like any other type of food. Like, even if I eat like regular vegan food, like, it's like that beyond meat that we gotta eat, or even like if I just eat something like rice or something from like the Spanish pot, how you feeling wild sluggish and meat shit like this? Wow. This is my first right. time ever having a full. Well, this is not alcohol. This is not alcohol. Uh, whole chicken leg on your plate. All right. Well, Ethiopian food. Right. First time for that. Let me tell you that. No, this is food I was always mad interested in having. The first time I was supposed to have Ethiopian food, though, um, I ain't make it to the restaurant. Mm. Got some interference with people and police. I don't know. And I didn't feel like going after them after that. I'm going your whole trip. My whole trip. Got the party though. Part of the gaffle. Huh? <laughs> right. Exactly. Shit. That is nice saucy, bro. Huh? They show us you know. Um, <clears throat> that's about that's about good. Oh, I got some baklava. I thought baklava was like a Greek type of um like dessert. Actually, I heard it. Mostly. Right. Well, you know they probably stole it. Nah, yeah. You stole everything else, man. Right? I forgot. You right? Yeah. My whole is like... That is too far out of the center. Let's get your bev, cuz. It's like a flaky tart type of, damn, what is that? The flaky or something. No. Oh, that shit, um, fuck, I used to fuck with Danish. No, not Danish. It's like the flaky top layer. It might have had thin, thin layers of it. That was called it. It looks fire. It looks like it could have been warmed up, maybe. I'm gonna still slap it though, to be honest. Put the walnuts in the middle. Mm -hmm. Like a pastry. Look like some sweet dough a little bit. No, <laughs> I'm. I like the glaze on the bottom. I don't know what baklava is though. You know what I mean? That's fire. Yeah. Nah, yeah. It was good. Yeah. Pretty familiar type of Flavor, nothing out the box. Like it was like, oh, I don't want to none of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And your plate looks like I could definitely eat that too and really satisfy with the lentils right. and the uh, yeah. bags of mushrooms and onion and all that right. stuff. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. All right. But um, wow. for me, the first time there, feel I feel, I feel good, like you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> word. But good looking, y'all. Just remember to like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think. You know what I'm saying? We got more shit coming. We're getting better. You know what I'm saying? Keep on the lookout, you heard? Definitely. And show love to your people. I'll let y'all later.